What's good, everybody? My name is Mr. Peters. We're back at it again with another video. Today, we're talking about solving proportions, and I got three very simple steps to make this an easy process for you guys. So when we talk about proportions, just remember, we're talking about fractions. We're talking about ratios, okay? So my first very helpful tip is we're going to draw an X. And when we draw this X, guys, what we're doing is we're going to cross multiply, meaning we're going to multiply the terms that are across from each other, right? From the X that we see. So that means I'm going to multiply three times B and four times six. And we have to understand that there's going to be an equal sign in between those, those two answers. Okay. What we get for three times B, we're going to have an equal sign in the middle. And then the answer of four times six on the other side. So that's step one, right? We draw our X. And then after we draw our X to cross multiply, what we want to do is set up an equation. So if you look here, this is basically like a one step, two step equation, right? We know that three times B is going to give us the answer of four times six. So we start working this problem out, right? And now we have three times B is equal to 24. And then we know if we want to solve for B, right? The last thing now we have to do is to solve the equation. So first, very helpful tip, we drew our X, right? Then we cross multiplied. When we cross multiply, step two, we set up the equation. And now we're going to bring it home by now dividing and actually solving. So solving would be step three. And now we get an answer of B is equal to 24 divided by three. And let's see. I'm just playing with you guys. We all know that's eight. All right. So we get B is equal to eight. So very first problem. And now what we're going to do for the second problem, I'm going to just turn, we're going to turn it up a notch because when, when we're doing the problems, right, guys, I know the very first one is always easy. And then like the second one, it starts getting a little confusing. So let's say in problem number two, we have something like this, right? So this is my new problem. We have 2 over 10 is now equal to 4 divided by W plus 5. So the three same rules, right, or steps, they still apply, right? So for step one, what I want to do is I want to draw my X. But the difference now is it's W plus 5, and that kind of throws us off, right? Exactly. So what I tell students to do or a helpful trick that I liked when I was in algebra, is I like to put any expression that has more than one term. So if it has two terms, three, whatever, right, this one has two, we're going to put parentheses around it because that lets us know that we are going to have to distribute, which just means multiply. So we're going to set our equation up, right? On one side, we have four times 10 is equal to, and then on the other side, we have two. And in parentheses, we have W plus 5. So we did step one, guys. We drew our X to cross multiply. Now step two, we're setting up the equation. But when we have more than one term, that means we're going to distribute. Please try to remember that. This is, this is such a big tip um, I give to students, and it makes a difference. So now we go through, we start solving. And let's just switch the color to black real quick. So we have 40 is equal to, and now we're going to distribute, right? We'll multiply 2 times W to get 2W, and then we'll go back and do 2 times 5 to get 10, right? And now what we want to do is we're going to simplify our equation. So I want to combine my like terms, right? We want to solve now. So to do that, we subtract 10 from both sides. And as we're solving now, we have 30 is equal to 2 times W. So now we, we're at step three. We're trying to finish off and solve this equation. And just like the last problem, we're now going to divide by 2 to get our final answer. So now we know that this second problem, W is equal to 15. And like I said, guys, these three steps, they're just so, so helpful. And what I want to do is I want to go over one more problem because I want to show you guys that if you could just remember these three steps and master them, right, we could get almost all proportion problems right, 
Okay, because it's going to be just about the same steps. So in our last problem, what happens is we need to, and let's write this out first. We have 2x minus 6 divided by x plus 4, and that is equal to 3 over 5. Now, guys, just remember, same three steps, right? Just because we have two terms on the top and two terms on the bottom, that doesn't change the steps that we're going to do, all right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to call out our steps, right? We draw our x, we're going to set up the cross multiply, right? But remember, don't forget, when it's more than one term, add parentheses so we can remember to distribute. So we drew the x, and we remember to put those two terms, right? If it has more than one term, we put that whole thing in parentheses. We put it around parentheses, right? And now we're going to set the equation up. So at this step, right, I have 5, and I'm going to multiply, right, what's inside the parentheses of 2x minus 6. And that is now equal to, and on the other side, we have 3, and then in parentheses, x plus 4. So even though if the problem seems a little bit more complicated, guys, it's the same thing, right? We're doing the same three steps. Now what happens is the problem is longer. But you guys got this, all right? So we're going to go through now and we're going to solve like we did with the other problems. So when I look here, when we multiply, right, we have 5 times 2x. So we have an answer of 10x. And then we go back again and multiply to get negative 30 because that negative sign in front of 6 lets us know it's negative, right? And then we'll drop our equal sign, right? Bring it down. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply on the other side as well. And after I multiply 3 and x, I have my answer of 3x and then plus 12 once we multiply 3 and 4. So now... This problem becomes a little bit more complicated because we have variables on both sides. But very important rule when we're solving equations, just remember, variable has to be on one side of the equal sign. Number with no variable has to be on the opposite side that, so that we could solve the answer correctly. If you remember that, you'll, you'll get a lot of your equation problems right, okay? There won't be any issues with getting the song flipped. I mean, sign flipped. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to combine my like terms, and I'm going to start off with my variables. So we're going to subtract 3x from itself so that we could cancel that this term out and get it to zero. And then we're going to go on the other side of the equal sign, and we're going to do the same thing to its like term. And when I bring this equation down, this is what I'm going to have left. 7x minus 30 is equal to 12. Now we're going to do the same thing with 30 and 12 now. But the difference with moving 30 is there's a negative sign out in front of 30. So if we want to cancel that out now, we're going to have to add 30 to itself. So just remember, right, we're doing the opposite. So if it's a negative 30, we're going to add 30 to it to cancel it out. And we'll make sure we change our color to red. So I add 30 on that side, and I go on the other side of the equal sign, and I'll do the same thing to its like term. 12. And at this step, we have 7x is equal to 42. And just remember right now, we're at the very last step, guys. We're saying to ourselves, hey, a number times 7 is going to give us 42. A lot of times I see students will accidentally divide by 42. Just try to make sure that you don't skip that last step and that we're dividing by the right number, okay? So for the very last step, we're going to divide by 7. And after we divide by 7, we'll get x is equal to 6, right? So when you guys are solving proportions, we're going to ask that, you know, you hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Subscribe to our channel for future videos and leave any comments for future videos you guys would like to see. But when we're solving proportions, guys, three very helpful tips. I think these tips will help you guys so much if you just follow them. We're always going to draw our x just to make sure that we know exactly what we're multiplying. And if for some reason there is more than one term, right? Whether it's on the top of the fraction or the bottom, if there's more than one term, put it inside, put parentheses around it so you know that you're going to distribute to that, okay? 
And we know that distribute just means multiply. So after we do that, right, we draw our x, we're setting up the equation. That is the second step. We set the equation up. And after we set our equation up from step two, step three is to finally solve the equation and figure out what our variable is. So thank you guys for joining me today, man. I am Mr. Peters. It's a pleasure working with you guys. Thank you so much for your support. And like I said, drop some comments down below if you have any questions or future videos you guys would like to see on my channel. Thank you for joining.